This is Tuesday Drive. Now, as we all know, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic continues to hurt businesses across the region with the restrictions in place. And of course, it's also still hurting many community organisations, such as some cultural ones that we've all come to love over the years here in the Shoalhaven. The AMTC, Albatross Music Theatre Company, is one of those groups and sadly had to cancel three shows during 2020, which, as you can imagine, hit their bottom line. So as we move forward into 2021, they're about to not only put on their first production to bring some live theatre back to the show haven, but also use it as a fundraiser for the, the continuous expenses, which includes uh, the lease of the shed, where say, they use that for rehearsal space, and also the sets and the props which are, which are built and stored. And believe me, they've got a lot of them. Now, joining me in the studio is the president of the AMTC, Laura Turner, and Jane McIntosh, one of the stars of the next production of The Last Five Years. Welcome to you both. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Now, look, Laura, I'll, I'll start off with you, if you don't mind. How challenging has it been for two, in 2020 with COVID-19, the pandemic, and for the AMTC and just theatre in, gen, in yeah. general? Um, well, the arts were, the theatres were one of the first to close um, with COVID, and they're also one of the last to open back up. Um, problems around singing with COVID rules, um, especially with musical theatre, has been an issue we're continually dealing with. And um, cancelling three shows and the disappointment for cast um, has actually yeah, really hit our theatre family. Um, and then the Shahaven Entertainment Centre is doing renovations. So our next show for this year is also cancelled. Oh, no. Yeah. So we decided we need to do something different. And that's what this, uh, this production, the last five years, uh, is about. So... Now, the AMTC is uh, quite renowned for putting on some really big musicals over the years. What were the three that were cancelled last year? We were doing Annie in uh, July, I think it was. I'm trying to remember. We've we've changed it so many times. It was Mm. July and then um, we postponed it for November thinking, you know, that that would be fine. Mm. But again, it got cancelled for the second time. And Jesus Christ Superstar was meant to be in November. And we also had our junior production of Alice in Wonderland. So, but so many as... All businesses, plan mm. B, plan C, mm, mm. plan D. Plan F. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're really big musicals as well, especially yeah. Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. Does that mean that potentially you'll put those ones on again or does that mean you've you've lost the rights now? Do you have to reapply for the rights to put them on? No, um, the, the um, MTI have been amazing with that, with um, all theatre companies, so we can delay... Um, the performances. Right. So we are doing Jesus Christ Superstar in November this year, right. fingers crossed, uh, and Alice in Wonderland in July, uh, and just cancelling our April one. And you'd all obviously already selected the cast for all these shows, I imagine? Yeah. yeah. Not Jesus Christ. No, oh, just Jesus uh, Christ Superstar. No, we yes. haven't done that haven't at all. Done, okay. Like Annie, Annie right. was, was yeah. yeah. So we had a lot of disappointed orphans yeah. <laughs> for Annie. Yes. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes to disappoint no. it all. I guess, look, I guess the good news is, though, because well, they've got now got an extra 12 months of rehearsals, haven't they? So when it actually comes uh, to rehearsing once again, you'll be able to say, ah, 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 you've had more than your fair share of rehearsal time for those lines, young Annie. Yeah. We just need to make sure they don't grow. <laughs> They'll be oh, than yeah, our, that's our a our good point, actually. <laughs> and Jane was cast as Miss Hannigan, actually. So. Oh, has, has Jane grown out of the role no, now? No, no there's okay. no hope. <laughs> Sadly not. <laughs> now, Jane, uh, the, the the production is called uh, The Last Five Years. Tell yes. me about The Last Five Years. Not literally, of course, we yeah. don't have that much time, <laughs> well. but the production. <laughs> Where do um, I start, she says. <laughs> so the last five years, um, Albatross Music Theatre Company was looking for a musical that they could do in an intimate setting um, that would stand the test of COVID as well, Mm. so would be able to be performed even with restrictions in place. And um, like many of the members of Albatross Music Theatre Company, um, I'm a bit of a show buff. And uh, when I was speaking to some people from the committee, I did say that this musical by Jason Robert Brown called The Last Five Years um, is a great musical that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. It only has two people in the cast, um, so that's a bit of a bonus. And rarely do they sing together. There's only two duets in the whole show, one Mm. in the middle when they get married and one at the very end when um, 
Kathy has just had her first date with him and he's actually just saying goodbye to her. Um, so the the musical itself spans across five years of a relationship of two characters and uh, Jamie starts at the beginning of the relationship after just meeting this beautiful woman and Kathy starts at the end of the relationship when she's just found out that they're, they're going to go separate ways. Um, but there's so much more to the musical. Mm. It's about their lives. It's about how they deal with loss, with love, um, with their jobs. I mean, uh, Kathy is a struggling music theatre artist, so, um, you know, constantly going through that dreaded audition phase mm. um, mm. and not quite getting the job. Um, so there's some moments that I think people can relate to in multiple settings and definitely after 2020 with COVID-19, the, the difficult things we've had to face and um, challenges of relationships, whether that be um, intimate relationships or relationships with friends, family, the dog, the cat. Yes. Um, you know, so I, I feel like it is a great show that a lot of people can relate to and being so intimate and we're going to perform it at the School of Arts. Yeah, so it's nice that's to, lovely. Yeah, it's really nice to be back in that space and it's working really beautifully in that space in a cabaret setting where, you know, the audience members can actually purchase a bottle of wine oh or gosh, some beer. Oh, gosh, I haven't done that for a while. Grazing platters. Yes, uh, and a grazing platter. The important stuff, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so that it's sort of quite nice. It's a bit, bit more of a cabaret style. It's a chamber ensemble of two cellos and a violinist, uh, a guitarist, a bass guitarist and a piano and they're all local musicians that were super excited to get back into playing again with with the cast. So no, I think it's um, it's really coming together and it's it's something that a lot of people will enjoy and take something from. Now one of the things um, I read, I guess I was reading the synopsis of the play, is is it true that when it comes to the end of the show it's up to the audience to decide whose story they believe or whose side they're on. Is that right? Yes, we actually argue about this yeah. <laughs> as director and cast member. Yeah. Um, I really cannot stand the character Jamie. Really? He okay. frustrates me a lot, whereas Jane looks on Kathy yes. as quite weak. And, um, yeah, she so just... playing Kathy, I feel like she's sort of any chance that Jamie's tried to empathise with her situation, she pushes him away um, and doesn't really let him in. So I feel like in their relationship it takes two to tango and um you know jamie makes some very bad mistakes i don't condone some of the choices he makes in their relationship but and let's just be fair jamie's not here to defend himself jamie's right not now, here to <laughs> He's a bad man. I think he agrees. <laughs> yeah, he does agree. But, yeah, I do think at the end of the musical there is that point where the audience might sort of either feel empathy for Kathy or feel for Jamie having to, you know, make that difficult choice. And really at the end all the audience, they should probably feel that they probably weren't weren't going to be together. I mean, it's they're very different. And, mm, mm. Yeah, but it, it's... it's um, it feels like it's more than that, than just their their relationship. I feel like they, they go through a lot more. You'll have to come and see. I'm going to take this back to my <laughs> primary school years. It almost sounds a little bit like a Goosebumps adventure <laughs> yeah. where you sort of choose which path it's going to go like, in terms of the audience. Like, yeah. you know, who, whose side am I going to take? So I think when people um, have first heard about it, they're quite confused yeah. or even yeah. like... Uh, getting our head around moments where, like, do you have your wedding ring on in this part? No. no yes, that's back in that time. is and confusing. Like, things like that. Um, however, with people of our crew who have been watching it now, they're like, no, it makes so much sense. And I think part of it is it's cyclical. The first scene is where it ends again, very symbolic um, with different um, set pieces and um, symbolic props. But also um, I think the, yeah, the, the characters – have each different song so they're like episodic in structure so even mm. if you can't relate to the relationship or if you get a little bit lost in the storyline and the time you can still relate to each moment like your fantastic summer in ohio yes. when you're on the road in a show and she just wants to be home with her husband or i want him to come to ohio yes. to spend some time with me so mm. the song is sort of tongue-in-cheek and it's a little bit um sarcastic because she's singing about how fantastic the summer's going to be except he's not there and he should be there you know so she's sort of describing all the wonderful experiences she's having in Ohio that actually are very bad. Now look just quickly we are running out of time unfortunately um, Jane what was it like to to get back into the rehearsal mode again? 
Oh, it was so nice to get back performing something. I've got um, the beauty of I'm a school teacher, so it was summer holidays, mm. and so it was the perfect thing to do. A great way to start 2021. Um, I think there are a lot of performers and musicians out there that are just itching to be involved and be part of the, the theatre family, mm. which is really why we do it, you mm. know, um, that feeling of being a part of this, this community spirit and um, giving back to... Um, the audience is really what it's all about. So. And Laura, of course, you're on the opposite side yeah. of the stage. But for uh, you know, as the president, what was it like doing the big green tick and saying, "Go oh, ahead"? Some of our um, committee members were just so excited to sort costumes. We were so excited <laughs> yeah. to just get back in the theatre. I love working um, with Jane, and it's been great to. Um, throw ideas together. We do work very well together um, when we do productions. But to do something like this where we don't have a huge amount of people to deal with and mm. we can just work and, and refine scenes has been lovely. Mm. Um, I guess something really important to mention is that it is a fundraiser, so it is quite different. And we were um, collecting donations from businesses. So if there are any businesses that would still like to donate, they can get in touch with us on the Facebook page. Um, but so we'll have a lot of amazing raffle prizes and silent auctions um, over the three shows we have we really appreciate the support because normally we try to give back to charities in the area and so we hate to ask for help but at this stage we, we have had to. you need it yeah. yeah and just quickly uh sponsor a musician what's that about Take that one. Sure. So um, the other option too is to um, sponsor one of our wonderful musicians, um, part of that chamber ensemble. It can be any amount, um, and the details are on the Albatross Music Theatre page. Um, and it's just through a ticket tech donation type thing that'll go to the musicians, as we have recognised that they too have struggled this year and have lost a lot of work. Um, and so it's a great opportunity. Some of the musicians, actually, really young musicians as well. And it'd be great encouragement for them, especially as performing arts teachers ourselves. We have seen a lot of disappointed kids who are just wondering where their place is going to be in the arts in the future. And I think something like this to encourage those students um, and, and musicians is really great. Yeah. Now, AMTC's last five years will run for three shows only starting Friday the 22nd of January at the uh, Nowra School of Arts and uh, tickets can be bought through the Shoalhaven Entertainment Centre box office or at the Berry Music Centre. Good luck to you all. I hope you get all that money that you so rightly deserve. Thank you so much for coming to the studio this afternoon. Thanks for having us. Absolute pleasure. This is Tuesday Drive. <laughs>